Hi, I'm John, and I'm going to introduce you to my newest design. This is the Hamlet Delay and Preamp. The preamp section is an 18 volt preamp that's always on, and the delay is wired for tails. So when you flip the foot switch, it just turns the delay line on and off. The um, old repeats will carry over when it's switched off, so you won't lose something mid phrase, or if you had a nice ambient pad going, it won't lose that. And the basic controls for delay are on the front. This is the repeats knob, I've called it words, words, words. Over here is the mix knob, I've called it discretion. And down here is the procrastination control, which is, of course, the length of the delay. It goes from about 40 milliseconds at minimum to about 600 milliseconds at the top. Um, repeats go from just one slap back repeat, one and uh, two, and maybe the ghost of a third repeat uh, right there eight or ten repeats at noon, and then somewhere around two o'clock it'll start doing infinite but non-oscillating repeats, and of course if you turn it all the way up it'll do the runaway volume thing that most delays do. On the inside are a couple other controls. There's a volume trimmer down here. Um, there's a little bit of boost available, uh, um, somewhere around maybe six decibels in this particular build. Um, I've set it up for just a little tiny volume boost, uh, about three decibels. Depending on what transistors used and a couple other things inside the pedal, you can sometimes get it close to 10, but it's not, it's certainly not made to push a, push an amp. It's just made to provide a little bump and um, maybe drive a, a long cable chain or something. This is the bias control. We're not going to mess with this, but I will say I bias mine a little bit high. I prefer the sound when it was set at about 10.5 volts instead of 9 volts, which would, would be customary for an 18 volt effect. Over here is a tone control for, the, for just the repeats. When it's fully counterclockwise, it's at its brightest. They're actually brighter than the dry signal quite a bit, although you'll get a little bit more distortion. And when they're turned all the way up, they're darker than the dry signal. Um, not a, not like a lot of not super dark like a lot of analog delays, but much more analog like. Um, it's actually very close to my Maleco 616 when it's set fully, fully uh, clockwise. So let's hear just the preamp section first. As I said, it's not true bypass. So when you, when you, when it's plugged in, your signal is being preamped. So this is just the preamp. Um, this is bri uh, bridge and middle. So really totally transparent. There's no filtering. Um, it doesn't cut any highs or lows. Um, it doesn't really boost any highs or lows either, so just pretty much flat tone like across the spectrum. Let's turn on the delay and set it to one repeat. I've got the mix just about unity and I'm going to set it for a slap back setting. So pretty low, maybe about 150 milliseconds, somewhere around there. That's going to be about an eighth note setting now. Let's add a couple repeats, bring the mix down a little bit. This is one of my favorite settings. I kind of like the urgency of eighth notes.
three beats up, create kind of a little pad type effect. <laughs> particular sound is something that I think is unique to a, a PT2399 delay chip and when I was designing this, since I wasn't going for a, the sound of a pass delay, I wasn't trying to emulate a tape delay or an analog delay or anything like that, I was looking for something to really bring out of this particular delay chip and this kind of um, bell um, singing sound is what I really wanted to to get and there's other delays that have a little bit of this but I I just started removing a bunch of filtering until I could get um, a much better a much clearer example of it so I, again this is this is kind of one thing I really wanted to bring out of the delay chip and it'll do that when it's oscillating to build this sort of um, pitch shifted um, pad behind the repeats. Um, and let's just bring the delay all the way up. Um, the tone knob's at halfway right now, so there will be a little bit of distortion on the longest repeat setting. But it's not horrible. Uh, um, if I put the camera like right up to the amp, you could hear, you could maybe hear some um, motor boating that comes in the chip. But it's it's not horrible when the tone is set at halfway. But if you go for the brightest possible repeats, um, you can hear a lot of the shh distortion, even. There's even some distortion on, on much shorter repeats, like around 300 milliseconds. But, I, I mean, I do know some people that actually like the sound of the distortion. I'm not totally fond of it. I don't hate it. But um, my favorite setting is more like one-third to one-half on the, on the tone repeats. <laughs> It just, I think it really brings out the kind of bell-like quality of, um, of the chip and, um, and without much distortion at all and kind of just separates the tone of the repeats from the dry signal. This is all the way up, so as I said before, this will be a little bit more analog-like. is uh, the repeats aren't, as, aren't quite as loud, but also the oscillation occurs in a different part of the pause travel. And you can hear this, this will also get more of the, um, more of the kind of honk sound of an analog delay in the darkest settings. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you're interested in knowing more, I'll post the build documents on my website. You can find me on uh, Madbeam forums, DIY stop boxes, and build your own clone. And I'll be posting threads about the delay there. I'm working on a PCB 
for people to be able to build it a lot easier and I'll also post an etch and perf board layout for people who like to uh, be a little more DIY than using a PCB. So thanks for watching.